I'm sorry. No, I'm zone. I'm in a coma for three days. Uh, you know how it is. My name is Total Biscuit of the Wild Podcast. Blue, please, on cynicalbrit.com. And oh, God! What the hell is that thing? I never had any of these on Kezen. Oh, dear. This is the continuing adventures of High YouTube in a new series. We kick it off right here in Juratar. We're going to be heading into Ashara today. But first, we must make a delivery. You, you can't be serious. I'm not riding that thing. Hell no. It's going to eat me at the first chance it gets. Oh, I don't have a choice. Oh, dear. Let's just hope it sees something tastier, larger, and meatier ahead. Well, I suppose it's a welcome to Juratar gift. Yeah. Have this carnivorous warg. It may or may not eat you. That would be the best thing. Hardcore wow. Right here. This is how you do it. So you roll a character up, and then you go on this, and there's a chance that your character will be eaten by a warg. You must then re-roll. That's the truly hardcore experience. And all that casual nonsense. Oh yes, indeed. As you can see, Juratar is a little bit more militarized than it was. This is the Dranashar Blockade, which I assume is some kind of blockade. For blockading. And we've seen this in previous videos, but it never ceases to impress. The walls of the new, improved, and spikier Ogrimmar. Totally up for that. Also, why is that warg constantly opening its mouth? It's like it's sucking in plankton. You won't find any plankton over here. That's probably why I'm so damn hungry. I'm gonna get off this thing as soon as I possibly can. There you go, from ground level this time. I did a ground level video before, but hey. Always nice to look at. A little bit more populated than it used to be when I last filmed here, I can tell you that. There we go. Now, Garrosh's place is actually at the front of the Valley of Strength. They got rid of the old fortress. He chills out here. He's got Manoroth's bones all over the place. I used to be a big fan of those. Greetings, Garrosh. Please don't kill me with that axe from Karazhan. Also, here's a merit badge. Enjoy. Wonderful. We actually get a racial ability here. It's kind of odd that they give it to you, but it's neat nonetheless. Hey, hey we found the stray hobgoblin around here somewhere. Here, have it. Now go away. So, as it turns out, most of the goblins have been turned into a labor force, which sounds entirely reasonable. Now, at this point, everything actually opens up quite a bit. We've reached the hub area, and we are given quests to go to a variety of different places, one of which, of course, is Rage Fire Chasm. A little low for that. I might do it after I've done some stuff in the shower, get some fat loots. Some nice stuff in there. Earthen Ring wants us to go deal with the barons. And this fine gentleman over here would like us to go deal with Razor Hill. Kind of odd, because that's a l Well, we seem a little high for Razor Hill. But as it turns out, looks like they've bumped the level range of Razor Hill up a little bit. Is that an elevator? I really have no idea. Now, at the front there, those of you wondering who she is, that's a transportation specialist. Makes, you, makes it easy to get a Hygel. There used to be a bunch of other teleporters out here, but not so much anymore. There's one that will take you to Vashir. I don't believe I can access that yet, just simply because of my level. Should be something to do with Deep Home as well, but again, I don't even have a late level 82 character on the server, so... It's kind of a non-issue. I'm gonna have a little bit of a wander around. What I want to do is, I want to take you to the Goblin Slums. I'll cut out a lot of this stuff. I'm mostly wandering around, seeing what's going on and what's changed. There has been a few changes, specifically they managed to get rid of all the festival stuff all over the place, so... It looks a little better. They've also populated the Goblin Slum, which was... Not that way before. Either that or it's a phase, which is also a possibility. The last time I checked the Goblin Slum out was in the first ever beta build, so it might have changed since then. I really can't tell. I did notice a little bit of frame rate jerking in the Garrosh throne room, so that might have been a phase. Now, this will take you to the Goblin Slum, and we can go see what's going on here. Goblin Slum is actually a fully fitted area. It's got everything you could possibly need, auctioneer included. All the class trainers you might want. 
kind of neat, really. A little ugly, but then again, that's what goblins are. A little ugly. And as always, they've always got the queue for the bank. You know, they could just get a few more tellers and they'd be fine. Hmm, didn't I break into that earlier? Obviously, they'd fix that up. Uh, the item we got earlier from Garrosh was a racial ability. It was the Mobile Banker. It's a hobgoblin that will give you access to your bank. I believe it's on a 30-minute cooldown or so. It's very neat. I don't know who this person is, but he's got a lot to say by the looks of it. As well as a bunch of sycophants milling around her. Style and garb, though. I'll give her that. She's also not that tall. A little bit, maybe. Actually, yeah, I suppose she is. That's a full head higher than me. Well, there you go. Giant goblin. The swimming pool. Not exactly in a great state, is it? All the fish are dead. They used to be fishy, I'm fairly sure of it. Not anymore. Various trainers dot this area as well as vendors, repair, everything you could possibly need. So if you want to hang around as a goblin, this would be the place to be. Honestly, it's a great place for anyone to hang around. I wonder if it's accessible to other folks. I'll have to go back in and check it out. But whatever the case, everything is in one neat place. So you don't really need to go anywhere else. A lot of the trainers are currently broken in the beta, so my attempt to learn how to cook a delicious meal will be thwarted this day. Now, I did pick up a bunch of junk at the end of the last zone, so I might as well equip my... Four stam, four int leather trousers. It's got more stamina on it. Might as well. And they're blues. They look better. Actually, they don't really. They look almost identical. They've gone down the route of what they did with Wrath of the Lich King, which I hope gets diversified before launch, in that a lot of the items look uniform. I'm not into that. I'd prefer, say, Skittles Goblin with bright, multicolored, gaudy garb than items that consistently look the same across about 20 levels. That's not all that fun. As you can see there, the green chess piece that I'm wearing looks a little bit more interesting. Is this a new crab model? This is very important. Interesting. I've never seen that before. Maybe it is a new crab model. I don't know. I might as well bind here and get all of that sorted out. And we can learn a couple of abilities while we're here. Then I'll cut out the rest of it and get us straight to the action in Ashara. Parry and Recuperate. Recuperate allows you to regenerate your health in a percentage-based manner using combo points. It's very nice. It allows you to go for longer. Nothing wrong with that at all. And there is our mobile banker. And that's what he's holding for me at the moment. Okay, cool. We're sorted. So I'm going to skip forward and we can go... Venture into the world of Ashara, which is mostly a goblin slave mining colony, I think. The claim were equal partners, allies of the Horde, but I know better. Sounds like some kind of scam, a Ponzi scheme, and I know Ponzi schemes. Alright, well, first things first, we report to the Labour Captain. What has he got for us? Well, Shredders, once again. Why is it always the bloody Shredders? Goblins have this unhealthy obsession with things like that. Spinning blades, grabbing claws, stompy robots, explosions. Can't be good for your health. Or your skin condition. The orc, however, has something a little bit more traditional for us. We've got to go kill some stags. And we also, in the meantime, need to hunt down some night elves, which is always enjoyable. No doubt about that. Now, the shredder is a running theme throughout this part of the zone. And Ashara is enormous. You're going to be here for a long time. You can see off in the distance the rocket way that I did show you in the Ashara flyover video, which I did actually have to take down due to copyright reasons. I used a song I didn't have permission to use, Naughty Me. I will re-upload it when I get the chance to replace the music. Or when a guy gives me permission to use their music. I'll contact Nuclear Blast, see what they've got to say about that. There's one of the shredders over there, but yeah. This whole quest line has a nice common theme running through it, which is not something we've seen outside of Wrath at any rate. 
Bear in mind, for all the bad things that people say about Wrath, and most of them are completely accurate, Wrath did do one thing very right, and that was questing. Speaking of questing, there you go. You notice there the new quest hand-in interface. There are some quests that do not require to go back to a quest giver. And if that is the case, they will pop up in a little box right there, and you can just click complete. Some of you might view that as appeasing the casual players and making the game too easy, but I would like to remind you that running halfway across a zone is not hard, it's just really boring. In some cases, you're looking for story immersion, in which case, running back and forth and back and forth is impractical, especially when this thing apparently has a radio system within it. What is the point? So I'm going to slice some things up. Now, the cool thing about this shredder is that we get to use it several times throughout this quest line, and each time we do, it unlocks a different ability. So, by the time we get to the end of this line, you'll see the shredder becomes a fully functional combat unit. I must say, the vehicle controls have been tightened up so much more than they were in Wrath. It's actually a pleasure to use a vehicle now. My only concern would be that maybe in future zones, they're going to be using too many vehicles. At the end of the day... I did roll a rogue and not a shredder. That said, had I been given the option to roll a shredder, I think I would have seriously considered it. Yes, indeed, folks, you heard it here first. Second hero class goblin shredder confirmed inside sources. Those of you that were involved in the raiding community, well, indeed, in the whole community in the past couple of years at the start of Wrath will probably remember the complaints that came from excessive use of vehicles. The Malagas encounter got a lot of flack, and rightfully so, for Phase 3, and Oculus as well. Don't even get me started with that. That's still hated amongst many people, regardless of the many changes they've made to try and lessen the fact that it's really not a very good dungeon. Those concerns, honestly, are pretty valid. Vehicles are nice for spicing up quest lines by giving you something a little bit different. They cease to become spicy and exciting, if they become the majority of the quest line, unless there's some real justification for it. Some of the justification for it in this zone is a little off. Let me put it that way. It's good in terms of the quest that we just did, and there are a few other quests that it works very well for, but then it's just like, why are we using this again? We're just using this because we can, aren't we? I suppose that's kind of the goblin mantra, more so than anything. Uh, can't complain too much. What are you hovering over there for? Go away. Quit spying on me. I have a right to privacy in this zone, I tell you. I saw the Google camera car driving past there on the rocket way. I'll sue them. I'll get my money's worth. This does take a little bit of time. I think we could speed the rest of this up. There's a lot of hunting around for these scouts. I went over to a field earlier and noticed a massive number of dead ones. There's quite a few people hanging around in this zone right now for obvious reasons. Folks want to level here as opposed to the Barons, and I don't blame them. Excellent, a style and a red cape. Wonderful. Oh, God. The terrain here is going to artifact this video like no one's business. I think I'm set on a fairly high graphic setting in terms of the number of doodads. I'm not actually sure about that. Looks like all of that's flat. But yeah, I don't think you really need to hear about the intricacies of H.264 lossy encoding at VBR 2 pass 3 to 6 Mbps. You could do without that. And yes, that is the way that these videos are done. Just to try and preempt any more questions about how this is recorded, channel description page. I put all of my methodology there for people. I'm going to keep my methods a secret. I would prefer people made good videos on YouTube. Right. Looks like we've managed to find ourselves a drop quest. Excellent stuff. Good to see those make it a comeback. I don't remember too many of those in Wrath, actually. Maybe I just wasn't paying any attention. I always like those random things that would just pop out of nowhere. If you watch the Mulgore 2 video, you'll recall that I mentioned the idea of incidental quests that you would find in otherwise barren areas. Things to liven it up. Those drop envelope quests that you occasionally get in some zones, and they were most prevalent within the old world as opposed to TBC and Wrath, were interesting. It was nice to get something like that. A little bit of story immersion. Like, hey, what's this? What's this all about? I actually want to know. It's intriguing. Had a little bit of a mystery going on. Okay, so we can hand that into him. Now, this woman is all the way over there, so I did do this, and I will do a cut 
to give you the lore because there is a little bit there for you. Those of you who are interested in that, I'll pop that in just before the end of the video. In the meantime, that's a lot of dead scouts. Ugh. Stamina remnant. Useless. Oddly enough, I did notice something that disturbed me quite a bit, and you'll notice this more as we get towards the end of this questing arc. It's that the items in this zone are actually a little bit worse than the ones that were in the goblin zone. Looks like they've got some balance issues here. They've either overtuned the ones that are in the goblin zone or undertuned the ones in Ashara. Now, I'm a firm believer in the design philosophy of buff everything else as opposed to nerf one thing. It just makes things more awesome. So hopefully they can just bump the item levels and the stats up a little bit. And a little bit more choice and variety would not go amiss. I understand that not everything is useful, but... <sighs> just so much bloody leather ink gear right now. Okay, so what do we have to do? Well, I can tell you. We've got to deliver those scouts orders, but I'm not going to do that until later. We have to slay some Talrenda snipers. Now, if you paid any attention to the quest text, you'll know that this is our second outing in the Shredder. But this time, it's unlocked some different abilities. Firstly, we have to capture ourselves a Shredder. I believe you can also get one back at the quest giver, but it's more fun just to beat these up because I like the little message that comes out. Reminds me of programming BBC Basic. I made a little quiz game when I was about five years old. I misspelled the word clown. It was rather embarrassing. It also meant that no one else other than me can beat it, so I get this feeling of superiority every time I see it. I think it's still on a five and a quarter inch floppy disk somewhere. Okay, so we're going to chop down the saplings. That's where the snipers are hiding. There's quite a few of them in each tree. Surprising, really. Those aren't all that large. We also then get to turn night elves into fine, bloody paste. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a lot of new abilities. Excellent. We'll deal with those in a future video. I'm not going to go all the way back into the slums just to deal with that. Now, these two abilities are quite nice. One is sort of a targeted attack that's very damaging. The other is a conal area of effect in front. One way or the other, you absolutely wreck with these things. And as far as I'm aware, they seem to work on all of the mobs as opposed to just selective things. So just click it. And they get turned into itty bitty kibbles. There are a few in each tree. Which is a terrible idea, I might add. If you're going to put your snipers around, don't put three in each tree. Especially when there's all the shredders around. They're not even all that big. You can't hide three night elves in that. I must say, those scouts weren't all that stealthy either. I think the night elves are losing their touch. They used to be very good at the whole sneaky sneaky. Not so much anymore. Timber! Eventually. We're not very good at felling trees, are we? There we go. Fantastic. Slicey, slicey. Get back here. There is something so satisfying about that. Does that make me a bad person? I shall speed up the last bit of it right here. And since we're in the Shredder, we can activate once again the new remote questing interface. It's very handy. What are they... F what is that? Those are millions of peaches, and are they for free? Maybe they're just leaves, but they look like peaches, kind of. Spiky peaches. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting. Looks like the Night Elves didn't take too kindly to that, so while we're away, they are attacking the front gates, well, the back gates of Ogrimmar. We must go and help. In order to do this, we've been given a grenade launcher. Why would a Shredder have a grenade? Actually, I'm just not going to ask. It's best that I don't. The problem with this grenade launcher is, it's a little haphazard. It barely works, and actually it's a complete waste of time. As you can see, you can't hit anything with this thing. It doesn't appear to have any kind of targeting reticule, and it certainly doesn't home in. They just spam in a random direction. And maybe it's supposed to have a targeting reticule, and it hasn't been implemented yet. I suppose that would make sense. It's nice that they've got this active feeling to the zone. Look, something's changed. It's actually a war zone. There's fighting going on. They're not just sitting around. The mobs just aren't milling around, doing nothing, waiting to be slaughtered. They're actively attacking us. That's fantastic, especially for Lobby Zone. Aha! See, I managed to hit you with a grenade. That's about the only time that ever happens. Honestly, it's best just to use the spinny death blades and the other spinny death blade. It's the short-range death blade and the long-range death blade. 
Look at that. Wow, you can absolutely massacre with this thing. I want one for my birthday. Overall, they've given a fairly nice mix of ground combat and vehicle combat. Maybe they went overboard with the vehicle combat, but with something that's this fun to do, I don't think you can really complain too much. Spam grenades. Hope to hit something. That is the goblin way. Oh, they're going to break my shredder in a minute. Okay, fine. I shall press the instant death button. Go blade flurry. Kill everything. What a mighty, mighty level 14 I am. I'll tell you, these are terrible night elves. There we go. And we're done. Now, you can still use the remote questing interface, despite the fact that we blew up the radio. So, what is next in our mighty, mighty quest? Well, as it turns out, we need to speak to this fellow once again. Now, in this one, we get the final ability for the Shredder for this quest arc, and we have to go slay an ancient. Allow me to do a little bit of sneaky editing to make sure that happens in a smooth manner. Trust me, it's all going to be fine. It won't explode or anything. Well, maybe it will. Welcome to the Ancient Grove. We're about to despoil it greatly, and it'll be hilarious. Yet again, this is another one of these single-player boss fights that we saw first in Wrath of the Lich King, and now we've got them even in the low-level zones. That's great. I'm a big fan of that. It makes combat an awful lot more interesting. Fairly challenging as well. Sort of. I don't think we're really at any risk of dying per se, but... It's kind of neat. What else can you say? It varies things up a bit, and that's something the starting zones, and in this case now the lobby zones, sorely, sorely lacked. If their aim is to keep people playing past level 14, then... This will be a good start. Thinking back a little now, actually, the concept of the single-player vehicle boss encounter isn't something that was brought in with Wrath. It actually came in post-launch for TBC. Not so much as a daily quest, but as a repeatable quest up in the Blade's Edge Mountains. If you remember the multi-stage demon fight, whereby you had to collect a Pexus shards in order to get that to happen. Suppose that's where they prototyped the whole thing, and they polished it up in Wrath, and now they're spreading the concept to all manner of different level zones, and I can't really complain about that. I think that's a great idea. It's perfect for making the culmination of these various quests feel suitably epic and entertaining. Right, we'll hand this in, and then I'll give you just a little bit of lore. You don't need two minutes of me running over to this fellow. Although, this is what I was saying before, you see the damage on this. It's not that great. Let me do a comparison for you. Have a look at that. And then that. That's the weapons that I got from the Goblin starting zone. They're actually better. Oh dear. Okay, law time. Get your reading hats on. This is the Blood Elf we were told to go and see about these orders. They are written in an arcane script. This should give you a little bit of background into the... Arcane Arts of the Elves, as well as some of the Past of Ashara. So, feel free to pause and read all of this. I'm not going to do my best female Blood Elf impression. There are some that have heard my best female Blood Elf impression. I was very drunk. I don't really remember much, but I'm informed it was incredibly bad. Actually, come to think of it, I'm sure Terpster said it was very arousing, but then he is a little bit odd. Basically, my understanding is there was this magic academy that was really restrained, whereas Queen Ashara and the Highborn really weren't, and the magic academy was really boring, and they were like, oh, don't use the power. And like, we want to use the power, it's hilarious, let's use the power. No, no, don't use the power, it'll be bad, and oh dear, Burning Legion and stuff, arg. Something like that, anyway. That's my interpretation of the lore, it may or may not be 100% accurate. My name's been Tolbiscuit, this has been the first part of the Ashara Questing Zone. I'll see you next time.